Hey guys, Matt here. Welcome to Learn to Discern. Today we're going to be assessing some more teaching from Andrew Womack. And in this video, you will have to answer this question. If God says something and Andrew Womack teaches the exact opposite, who will you believe? But before we get to our assessment, if you guys want to help promote Christian content here on YouTube, please go ahead and take a second now to subscribe to my channel and thank you in advance. Okay guys, here we go. I don't understand everything about healing, but one thing I do know is that God wants you well. And God is going to do everything He can to get you well this week. He wants you well more than you want to be well. It's a lie of the devil that God only heals some people. I still don't understand everything. Most of it is our own problems. We get so full of religious teachings such as that God wants you to suffer that this is punishment. Those kind of things will hinder healing in your life. All right, let's go ahead and assess a few of the things that he said. So Andrew Womack, pretty clear that he says God wants you well and God is going to do everything that he can to get you well. So what, what is the takeaway there? Well, the takeaway is that if you're not getting well, it's your fault. Unless you think I'm putting words in Andrew Womack's mouth, that is actually what he teaches. My most recent video assessment that I did on him was him saying that if you have cancer, it is your fault. Straight out of his own mouth. I am not making this up. But let's look at a couple of the claims that he made towards the end. And so he said that a wrong belief that somebody could have is that God wants them to suffer. Well, let's see if that lines up with sound biblical teaching. This is 1 Peter 4:19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. So, did you notice that you can suffer according to God's will? That would mean that that is a part of his plan. It is a part of purifying and sanctifying you. That's very clear in scripture. James 1 is the best place to go for that, where you see that trials and difficulties and suffering have been allowed in your life because they are going to grow your character and make you more like Christ. So we can see you can suffer according to God's will. Now, the second thing that he said, he, he um, mentioned that maybe some people think that the sickness or the ailment that they have has been brought about because of sin. And he says that is a lie. Now, this is where we need to be nuanced because we see biblical examples. John 9 is a biblical example where a man is born blind and the disciples ask, who sinned, this man or his parents? And he said, neither, right? So his, his uh, predicament was not brought about because of sin. But we also do see places in scripture where it is brought about because of sin. And this is John chapter five, the healing at the pool on the Sabbath. So after Jesus has healed this man in verse 14, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you are well, sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. So he makes it very clear. If you continue on in your sin, uh, it's going to get even worse than it was before. So obviously, again, I'm not going to make definitive statements. And I think that's where people get in trouble. They say, all of your suffering is brought about because of your sin or none of it is. And biblically speaking, it can be brought about because of your sin and it cannot be. And we don't always know the difference, but to say that it's not ever brought about because of that goes against the words of Jesus who said that it could bring that sort of thing into your life. Okay, let's continue with our video. Uh, believing that God can do it, but that he hasn't done it, that you have no control over it. You just have to hope and pray, but you don't have any authority over it. I'm gonna be talking about that this morning. Those kind of thinkings will hinder you from receiving a healing. But I can promise you, God wants you well more than you want to be well. Jesus is the perfect example of what God is like. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, I am the express image of the Father. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, he's the express image. And that word means a perfect representation. Jesus said, whatever I see my Father doing is what I do. And yet you never see Jesus putting sickness on a single person. You never see Jesus telling a person you hadn't prayed enough. You hadn't fasted enough. Did you know all? Okay, so obviously he's saying, you know, Jesus never put sickness on anybody. So therefore God in general, of course, Jesus is a part of the Godhead, would never put sickness or anything like that on somebody. Now, again, this is a situation. Can the devil bring about those things? Absolutely. But can God? Listen to what God says in Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? If somebody is mute or deaf, 
or blind, do they need healing? Yes. The Lord said that he was the one who brought it about. I mean, it's there, guys. You can not like it all you want, but if you don't like it, you're going against what God said. You know, Andrew Womack said that Jesus is the express image of the Father, and that is very true. But here's what we need to understand. God is able to heal people of diseases. Absolutely. Nobody's denying that God uh, can heal people today. I believe he still can and does heal people today. But it's not a contradiction to also say that he wouldn't allow those things to come upon people when he very clearly has said that. In Jesus's earthly ministry, he was there for a specific purpose and reason. And one of the reasons he was doing the signs, it was to fulfill prophecy and to uh, point people to the fact that he was the Messiah. You can also think about when Jesus was walking the earth, he said, I did not come to, uh, to judge or condemn the world. I came to save the world. Well, that's not saying that he's not ever going to judge the world. He was saying during his earthly ministry, that was not the focus. The focus of the message was salvation. Hey, trust in me. I am the Messiah. Place your faith in me. There is a time coming down the road where he absolutely is going to judge all people. And so um, we can't really pit these two against each other. And you can't say, well, Jesus was healing people. Therefore, he's not putting sickness on people. Well, here you are, guys. Remember, Jesus and the Father are one, and here is God saying that he makes people mute, deaf, and blind. All right, let's continue on with his teaching. All of the people that Jesus ministered to were messes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mistaken idea that you have to have your whole act together and have everything right before God will move in your life. But religious tradition and doctrines of men, Mark chapter 7, verse 13, says it makes the word of God of none effect. And we have a lot of stinking thinking that hinders us from receiving. You know, Mark 7, 13, that is true. Jesus speaking about the Pharisees and saying, you have put aside the, the doctrine of God, the word of God, the sound teaching, and you have taught instead doctrines of men. Kind of like this doctrine that it is always God's will for you to be healed. And I will show you that here in a second. That is a doctrine of man. That is not a biblical understanding. It's like a pipe. It's clogged up and full of all of this stuff. And the, the water is there, but it can't get through because of all of this stuff that's blocking the flow. So it's not your sin. It's not your lack of being holy. It's not any of these things. It's just stinking thinking, wrong attitudes that really hinder the supernatural. All right. So it's still your fault, though. It's your thinking. Now, let's let me show you that not every person gets healed, nor is it always God's will to heal them. This is the Apostle Paul. Now, you remember the Apostle Paul had the thorn in his flesh. It seems most likely that it was some sort of physical condition. Some people will say it was not. In fact, almost all uh, word of faith, health and wealth, Andrew Womack type teachers will say it wasn't a physical condition. Okay. Well, you still would have to explain away Galatians 4.13. Galatians was written by the Apostle Paul. He says, you know, it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first. Bodily ailment. He had some sort of condition. How about 1 Timothy chapter 5? This is Paul writing to Timothy. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. How come... Paul doesn't tell Timothy, Timothy, you have stinking thinking, man. You need to believe that God has already healed you. You need to understand that God doesn't want you to suffer. He said, no, take a little wine. This is the way you can deal with it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. Paul again writing, Erastus remained at Corinth, and I left Trophimus, who was ill, at Miletus. So Trophimus was ill, was sick. And Paul didn't just claim his healing. He didn't teach him to get rid of that stinking thinking. Nope, he left him ill at Miletus. Guys, again, we understand God is able to heal. I have no problem with anybody praying and asking God for healing. But you need to understand that that is what you should be doing. You should be asking God. Remember this verse in, in 1 Peter 4, 19. When you suffer according to God's will, it may be God's will. It may not be. You, it may be God's will to heal you. Pray for it. Absolutely. But what you need to do is this last part as well. Entrust your soul to a faithful creator while doing good. Understand, God knows. God knows what is best. And his main purpose is to conform you into the image of his son. His son was a man of sorrows, a man of suffering. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. I mean, isn't persecution suffering? So when, when uh, Andrew Womack's like, God doesn't want you to suffer. 
well, Jesus said they persecuted me, I suffered, and they're going to do the same to you. So yeah, it is a part of the territory. It comes along with it. And if you want to be strong in your faith, and, and let me end with this. Word of faith people really like to hype themselves up and say, look at the great faith that I have. I'm trusting God for my healing. It's it's his will that I be healed. I have tremendous faith. That's not tremendous faith. That's actually just unbiblical garbage. True faith is the sort of faith that says, I love Jesus. He is my greatest treasure and delight. I entrust myself to him. I know that everything that he does is good in my life, even when I suffer. And I'm not focused on the here and now. That's the consistent message of scripture. Don't focus on temporal things. Focus on eternal things. Focus about being with him. The apostle Paul said, my body wastes away. Outwardly, we're wasting away. Inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. These light and momentary afflictions, they're not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed. True faith is the person who says, if I must suffer 10, 20, 100 years here on earth, I'm going to be with Jesus forever and it's worth it. I'm going to trust in him and I'm going to continue to do good. Andrew Womack is not a faithful teacher of God's word. He is leading people astray. He is somebody you need to avoid in the faith. Okay, guys, let's do pray for Andrew Womack and everybody associated with his ministry. If you could please subscribe to the channel, I would appreciate it. Also, please remember that you can partner together with me financially in ministry. I have profiles on both Ko-fi and Patreon, and I'll put links to both of them down below in the description. You can give a one-time gift or sign up for monthly recurring donations. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, God bless.